my name is Matthias. I work here in Ericsson, uh, most with CI CD tools. So then, um, <coughs> uh, this presentation uh, will be a walkthrough of the AFO landscape uh, and all the basically all the repositories that we have here in, in the community. Uh, so a short agenda. Uh, we will have um, uh, an overview. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the life cycle. Uh, I will walk through most of the repositories, but not all of them. And then there's some time for questions on the end. So this is a draft landscape of what uh, repositories you can find in the community. Uh, we have um, many repositories that just contain one thing. Uh, we do have repositories that contain uh, well, we have many repositories, but I've grouped them together in just one one uh, box here. Uh, we do have some libraries and we have some special ones. Uh, one thing you may notice is Mike notices this badge here. And we have a life cycle uh, for repositories in Eiffel. Uh, so what is this life cycle? Uh, the first stage of this life cycle is a sandbox. Uh, stage, but uh, that is for new projects and uh, projects that haven't, uh, yeah, come very far. And uh, so the idea with this life cycle then is also to give an idea for users outside. Okay, can I trust this project or not? So if it's a sandbox sandbox stage, might not be able to trust it that much. Next stage is graduated. And this is for uh, projects that we think are, uh, yeah, well deemed for uh, for use. Um, and also, one criteria is that we have two different uh, organizations that are actually supporting this one. So currently, we only have one uh, there. Uh, the last stage is archived, and that is for uh, projects that we don't think there's going to be further development on maintenance. Yeah, so you might notice here, I got this graduated badge on the AFER protocol and such. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we do have a couple of um, repositories that are just marked as one. So I'm just going to show an example uh, here with uh, Remrem. Uh, so Remrem consists of a, a bunch of different repositories, but we just draw them as uh, one here and here. Let's start diving in. Uh, we have a bunch of repositories here um, that is uh, because they special repository, community related repositories. Uh, so first of all, so we have the community repository. And uh, this repository is uh, where we hold all our documents connected to the, the community and the governance of it. For example, we have this governance document where you can read about how AFOL is governed. Uh, we have elections. We have a technical committee that governs it, and these are the election meetings. Uh, we also have our meeting notes here, and we have this project lifecycle uh, that I talked about, and also how to handle if we have security issues in the protocol. Uh, next one we have here is um, we have a AFL playground. This is a kind of like a special repository. If you want to test out something in um, like a CI CD world, um, like sending <coughs> excuse me, events for uh, when you deliver things and so on, and you want to try that out and want to have do commits, but don't want to pollute your repository, you can use this AFL playground repository. Uh, we have uh, a repository that holds our templates if you want to create other repositories. Uh, and in here, we also have a repository checklist uh, that you need to follow if you want to create a new repository. Uh, so we have a, a home page. Uh, you might notice if you go to the start of the community, uh, we have this page here. And um, here we also hold the summit agenda. 
And then this page is located in here in AFO community github.io uh, and all its files here. And we have this .github repository. This is a little bit of a special repository. Um, it's a GitHub thing uh, where we have uh, documents when you try to create uh, pull requests and so on, you might see contributing and code of conduct, and that's what we host here. We also have our templates, uh, for example, pull request templates and issue templates. They're only located in this .github um, uh, repository. Yeah, we have two uh, some of the special uh, things. Uh, we have the AFL uh, repository. This is kind of like the reason we're here, maybe. Uh, this holds the specification as such. So here on the AFL vocabulary, you have all the different events, and you also have a description of that event. We also have the AFL Sapia. And this is intended to be a kind of like an architecture uh, suggestion uh, where we try to categorize the events. And if you check here, we have a little bit of description about when you use these events. Um, also a little bit when to use the events and when to use a certain piece. So for example, wrap the MQ message broker and a little bit around uh, how you can set that one. So that is the full uh, safer repository. Now there is one other gotcha because if you check here, you don't see any files, and that is because we have them under uh, GH pages. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we have a bunch of plugins. Uh, we have the Garrett plugin, uh, which is um, a, a plugin enabled in, in Garrett. You just install this plugin. It will listen on on changes in Garrett and send out AFL events. Uh, so it's pretty simple. We have the Garrett Herald, uh, which is also the same thing, um, a little bit different. I haven't worked with this myself, so check out with people from Access if you want to have some more information about it. Uh, we have uh, the AFL, uh, AFL Actory. I don't think you can get, again, this is not a plug-in actually, but what it does, it listens for if a artifact created, and, and then it creates an artifactory uh, to find the location and sends the artifact published. So it's actually a service, it's not a plug-in, but yeah, uh, maybe like a typo plugin. Uh, to get started, we have a full easy to use. Uh, and this is um, the idea with this one is trying to get you to get started easily. Uh, so it's basically a bundle, so you can use Docker or Kubernetes. And it spins up all the services you use to, you need to actually uh, run a full, for example, uh, message bus and ER and so on, so you can try out. So that's the idea with this one. And we do have some visualization. Uh, I'll start with Vichy here. So if uh, Vichy uh, will uh, visualize events if you give them a blob of events um, and a JSON and a visualize them. Uh, AFL store is basically a clone of Itchy, but it's actually, it uses, it's a live um, event visualization, so it will visualize them um, a little bit one by one instead. Yeah, uh, so AFL store is, you can't insert whole blob, but you need to start them one by one, I was trying to say. So when it comes to sending events, uh, we have a couple of them. Um, I showed you previously before a rem rem. I haven't added them all in here. Uh, 
So Remrem stands for REST Mailbox for Registered Messages and is a service that you can um, start. And then you can, via REST calls, uh, send AFL messages. So you can basically use a curl command to send AFL messages. So if you're using a bash script or something, you can then call Remrem and Remrem will send AFL messages on the message bus. Uh, and all of these ones are also validated. Um, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> we have the simple event sender, uh, which is a, a sender for events, also written in JavaScript. Uh, so for processing events, uh, we have AFL intelligence. And this is a, a real-time aggregation uh, solution that will aggregate events. And then you can uh, create subscriptions and say that you want to wait for a certain event to happen or chain events to happen. And then you can get the mail or you can get a REST call um, when those um, events have come is here. Um, there is a front end to it also. And uh, this front end then has a GUI, uh, where you, for example, add descriptions and use descriptions and so on. So it's for ease of use, else the back end is an API only application, actually. Uh, if you want to store and query events, these are the ones we have in open source. So we have, um, excuse me, and the first one, uh, AFL Graph API, QL, Graph QL API, sorry. Um, and this is uh, basically a Graph Q, QL API on top of MongoDB. It's used by uh, Ethos, I think. Uh, I've not worked with myself uh, to store and retrieve um, events. We have the AFL Goer. This is one of our newest um, projects. Uh, this is a Go implementation of our event repository API. Uh, hopefully this is compatible with uh, Ericsson's one. Uh, we have uh, AFL Persistent Technology Evaluation. Uh, this is a repo that holds a kind of a comparison or attempt to compare uh, MongoDB, Neo4j, OrangoDB. Neo4j is a graph um, database. So if you're interested in comparing different solutions, you can check out this one. And there is a little bit of, of comparison help here. Uh, we have a bunch of libraries. Uh, and these libraries then probably uh, demands a little bit of coding, so it might be something you're using out of the box then. We have the AFLib, and this is a Python library for subscribing uh, to and publishing events uh, to Event Broker. Uh, we have uh, the AFL um, uh, Garrett lib. Uh, this is actually a support lib to the Garrett uh, AFL Ger Garrett Herald, um, and it will take uh, Garrett events and convert them to AFL events. We also have this um, AFL Commons, uh, which the idea is for, for to to centralize common parts in all our uh, Java applications that we have, uh, and I have them in, in one place. We have a test framework, ethos, uh, and the idea with this uh, here is to 
AFU running tests. So ETA stands for a full test orchestration system. And the idea is when you're running tests, uh, you want to differentiate from uh, what to run, how to run, and where to run them. And this would ETOS will help you with. If you're interested in uh, this test orchestration system, so I would recommend you to check out these authors and contact some of them. So this was a quick walkthrough uh, of the uh, repositories we have. And uh, yeah, keeping with Mangus, it took probably a little bit less time uh, than I was expecting. So do you have any questions? Um, Kenneth here. Actually, I have some questions. Like, mm -hmm. um, so we have like uh, so many repositories. Like, uh, I'm I'm wondering who who has started like all this like a uh, like a uh, smaller applications or like a uh, plugin or, or stuff like that. Um, I've not been in uh, the whole history, but if you take for example, um. I think these visualization repositories are created by uh, people from the university, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, so we have the university here in Linköping that's been in, interested in this. So they have started a bunch of repositories. Um, we also have um, like trials and from the beginning of trials repositories. There is a couple of repositories here that I haven't walked through that are today empty and could be deleted. And so it's a bit different people that have started them. Uh, Christopher Neiman, do you want to add in there? I think that's that's it. <laughs> that's great. Uh, unless Kenneth or anyone else has more comments on it. Uh, I've, I've like it's it's all this like a repository like and and all this plugin like uh, it has been used by uh, like uh, like uh, anyone like uh, yeah so it's just because I, I I didn't know that we have such as so many repo like uh, like uh, you would have something like comparison on between like uh, different different databases. So yeah, so it, it was quite quite nice to know like the, the whole landscape about that. Yeah. Thank you. So do we have any more questions? Um, <clears throat> hello, Magnus here. You uh, went over the IFL intelligence community, the uh, intelligence repository, and you mentioned it was a uh, REST API only application. How does that fit in with the uh, earlier um, not the keynotes, what you call presentations, where uh, Aethan was uh, strongly described as uh, a uh, community where we don't really want point to point communication, but uh, publisher and subscribers. Um, uh, good question. Uh, what I probably was trying to say here was when I was talking about the front end and um, we have uh, a GUI um, for uh, communicating with April Intelligence, um, but it's it's not mandatory to communicate with a GUI, but you can actually communicate to do it with um, using APIs. But were you thinking of actually, um, yeah, so so communicating with this application, you're using uh, REST calls to to add and, and remove subscriptions and so on. But this will then, of course, listen to the message bus. Uh, but currently, it does not send an event. Did I give any answer to your question? Yeah, um, I guess it's the not sending part, really, that uh, I'm trying to understand how it fits in. But uh, uh, yeah, I think I have my answer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. 
Uh, Eiffel intelligence could send events. Depends on what you configure it to do. Yeah. Um, the rest um, when you when you have subscriptions, you will you can trigger rest call and that rest call can then trigger rem rem if you want to. Perfect, thank you. Any more questions? What's your personal favorite here, Matthias? The big landscape. Um, personal favorite. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that was a question I haven't thought of. Um, I don't know. I guess it's the the core of the whole thing, and that's why we're here. Um, and this one is the one that we have, um, like most community effort around. So I guess that one becomes um, the kind of favorite one. I guess. Does that have any answer to your question there? Yeah, it was what what you were thinking. I think so. Now when you, yeah, I agree. It was a good overview. And now when you've been done that, if, if, I don't think uh, many of us ha has done this walkthrough as you have done it now. So, and just I was curious about what you were thinking after doing that. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I think it's the the um, Eiffel where where most uh, collaboration is happening. I think that's the the favorite one. This is great. A lot of questions. Anything more? Any more question? I take that as a no.